Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. A Sunday Holy Mass celebrated by Archbishop Juse, Joseph, Vu Van Tien of Hanoi, Vietnam, was disrupted last Sunday by government officials, Viet Catholic reported. The incident occurred in the largest church in Vu Ban, Hoa Binh Province, with government officials wearing helmets, led by the head of the local section of the Communist Party, who moved to the altar. Archbishop Vu Van Tien was conducting the 10 a.m. Mass at time, celebrating the Archdiocese's Mission Day. The officials shouted at the Archbishop to immediately stop the liturgy and disperse the faithful. The faithful tried to protect the Archbishop and remove the trespassers from the church, Viet Catholic reports. After the men left, the Mass resumed, but the local Catholics were left in shock. This is the first time I've ever seen local government officials approach the altar to disrupt the Holy Mass without even waiting for it to end before harassing priests as they used to do in the past. For the first time we see them addressing priests with violence, disrespecting sacred ministers. This is a brutal and illegal action. This is blasphemy and blatant sacrilege said Father Peter Wynne Van Kai, a former spokesman for the Redemptorists. Agenzia Fides reported, it was rather unpleasant and worrying to see the liturgy interrupted by the presence of several state officials, said a note from the Archdiocese of Hanoi, referring to the eye outrage expressed by the local community. Plainclothes security officers interrupted the liturgical service. Led by the head of the local branch of the Communist Party, they marched to the altar, ordering the Archbishop in an altered voice to immediately stop the liturgy and disperse the assembly. It was not clear why government officials intervened and interrupted the Mass. Archbishop Joseph was celebrating the Eucharist on the seventh Sunday in ordinary time with other diocesan priests on the special occasion of the Archdiocesan Mission Day. Concelebrants and parishioners did their best to protect Archbishop Joseph and asked the officials to leave the church, allowing the liturgy to end. After this unfortunate incident, the Holy Mass resumed, even though the assembly was stunned and shaken. Catholics in Hanoi and believers of other religions in Vietnam have condemned this flagrant violation of human rights and freedom of worship. The government in India's state of Karnataka destroyed a 20-foot-tall statue of Jesus, that was erected in the village 18 years ago. The Archbishop of Bangalore, Dr. Peter Machado issued a statement condemning the government's actions. The government claims it was built on land preserved for an animal pasture. The Karnataka High Court had ordered the destruction, however local Christian leaders said the case was still pending. The Archbishop said, It is sad to note that yet another ruthless demolition of a Christian structure, which included a 20-feet statue of Jesus and 14 stations of cross was carried out by the Taluka authorities in a Christian village, Gokin, in Kolar. Though the church has documents of the two acres of the land where these structures were located, the local authorities considered them as not proper or incomplete. The matter is still being heard in the courts. In fact, the trial court had issued a stay order on the demolition, prior to the High Court's directives. Archbishop Peter Machado also explained, armed with 200 strong police forces, she supervised the demolition till midnight of 14th of February 2022 and pulled down the 20-foot statue to the ground, which has seriously affected not only the sentiments of the Christian community but also the people of other faiths. It was heartbreaking to see hundreds of people shedding their tears. In the last two years, we have seen demolitions occurring at six such places on the hills, and systematic attacks on the churches across the state. These religious places were patronized and maintained as places of devotion in Bangalore, and its surroundings for decades. In the context of the anti-conversion bill that is being much discussed, it is too big an expectation from the government for any act of benevolence to the Christian community. We only fear that much more such harsh, orchestrated and insensitive attacks are sure to happen in the coming days. Notwithstanding, we still hope and pray that the government will protect our places of worship, religious symbols and sacred structures, and that it does not continue to hurt the religious sentiments of Christian minority, said Archbishop Dr. Peter Machado. Catholic bishops of Colombia state direct abortion is an immoral act and a violent practice contrary to life. After court decision, the Episcopal Conference of Colombia expressed this, after the decision taken this Monday, February 21, by the Constitutional Court, 
on the conduct of abortion will only be punishable when it is carried out after the 24th week of gestation. In a statement, the bishops, X, pressing their perplexity and deep pain, observe that it cannot be minimized that every pregnancy implies the existence of another human being, different from that of the mother, who is in a state of defenselessness and vulnerability, therefore she has the right to be part of a family. To maintain that the rights to life and to receive the protection of the state, protected by the Constitution, do not cover it from the moment of its conception, is an affront to human dignity. Likewise, protecting the supposed right to suppress an innocent human life puts at risk the very foundation of our social order and the rule of law. Direct abortion is an immoral act and a violent practice contrary to life. The bishops, when mentioning Article 95 of the Political Constitution of Colombia, affirm that the problem of abortion cannot be limited only to pregnant women, but also demands the solidarity of the entire society. Pope Francis issues a decree confirming the use of the 1962 liturgical books for the Latin Mass. On Friday, February 4, 2022, two members of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, Father Benoit Paul Joseph, Superior of the District of France, and Father Vincent Ribeton, Rector of St. Peter's Seminary in Wigratzbad, were received in private audience by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for nearly an hour. They recalled the origins of the fraternity in 1988, the Pope expressed that he was very impressed by the approach taken by its founders, their desire to remain faithful to the Roman Pontiff and their trust in the Church. Pope Francis said that this gesture should be preserved, protected and encouraged. In the course of the audience, the Pope made it clear that institutes such as the Fraternity of St. Peter are not affected by the general provisions of the motu proprio traditionis custodis, since the use of the ancient liturgical books was at the origin of their existence and is provided for in their constitutions. The Holy Father subsequently sent a decree signed by him and dated February 11, confirming for the members of the fraternity the right to use the liturgical books in force in 1962, namely, the Missal, the Ritual, the Pontifical and the Roman Breviary. Grateful to the Holy Father, the members of the fraternity of St. Peter are in thanksgiving for this confirmation of their mission. After his general audience Pope Francis made a special heartfelt appeal for peace in the Ukraine which is now at war with Russia. My heart aches greatly at the worsening situation in Ukraine. Despite the diplomatic efforts of the last few weeks, increasingly alarming scenarios are opening up. Like me, many people all over the world are feeling anguish and concern. Once again the peace of all is threatened by partisan interests. I would like to appeal to those with political responsibility to examine their consciences seriously before God, who is the God of peace and not of war, who is the Father of all, not just of some, who wants us to be brothers and not enemies. I pray that all the parties involved refrain from any action that would cause even more suffering to the people, destabilizing coexistence between nations and bringing international law into disrepute. And now I would like to appeal to everyone, believers and non-believers alike. Jesus taught us that the diabolical senselessness of violence is answered with God's weapons, with prayer and fasting. I invite everyone to make next 2nd of March, Ash Wednesday, a day of fasting for peace. I encourage believers in a special way to dedicate themselves intensely to prayer and fasting on that day. May the Queen of Peace preserve the world from the madness of war. The U.S. Bishops' Conference President, Archbishop Gomez also called for prayers, on behalf of my brother bishops, I echo the Holy Father's call for prayer and fasting to end the war in Ukraine. In times of trouble, we call on the tender mercy of God, to guide our feet to the way of peace. Two days later, Pope Francis traveled to the Russian embassy in Rome and appealed for peace with Ambassador Alexander of Dayev of Russia. Watch our program every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.